Hey guys, welcome to Sketch Today. I'm Spencer, I'm an industrial designer. I've been doing this for over a decade now. So if this is your first time, definitely hit subscribe and turn on alerts. That is if you enjoyed the video and I hope you do today. And for those of you returning, if you haven't yet, be sure to turn on those alerts because we go live three times a week on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays here on Sketch Today on YouTube. You can also find me on the socials. I'm at sketchaday.com on Instagram and at daily sketches on Twitter. And of course, I'm easy to find on Facebook as well. Thank you so much for all the suggestions and ideas and feedback. I love feedback. So if you have any ideas, definitely comment on the videos below. Today, we're going to be taking one of your suggestions and requests that I've been getting over and over a few times now, which is how to draw a motorcycle. So grab whatever materials you have. But if you need ideas, or suggestions or just wondering what I use, you can always check out the video description below where I post links to the materials and it's a great way to support what we do here at Sketch A Day as well. So I am using a brush pen today and I'm just gonna sketch kind of a generic motorcycle, no person on it, but kind of talk about the geometry. Now, if we wanna break it down a ton, starting with the plane is probably a good way to do it because we can at least establish some fixed points of where to focus. These two lines allow me to divide this shape. So I know that this is a half and half now, just much like I would find the midpoint if I were drawing this orthographically. We now have a midpoint like so. Now, as far as the proportion goes, I'm gonna go with about a wheel and a half between the front and rear wheel. So let's start by sketching an Let's start by sketching an ellipse here, pardon me. And if we want to multiply this, it's real easy. Just mark a, a line there and we can project down one, another line in the middle, project down, that's two. And if we want to find the halfway point there, just to make sure we're proportionally accurate, this is the other box we're going to have. And now I have the position of my two wheels. So again, depending on the bike that you're drawing or want to draw, you'll have a different proportional representation. Now we're going to kind of keep this somewhat 2D. I do want to establish a point for where my headlight might be. And let's actually, I know I said 2D, but I'm just going to draw an axis here for that handlebar portion. Okay. We now have the center of these wheels like so. Okay. And just for good measure, let's divide these into their eight portions. And from the center here, I'm just gonna draw a line. And this is all just meant to guide me in the process, okay? And as far as the seat goes, we're gonna go up just a little bit like so, over and then back down, okay? And we need room for the engine and where all of that's going to go. So I'm just gonna draw over like so, much like that. Okay, and now we kind of have a framework that we can use to start building that motorcycle. Zoom in a little bit for you guys. And now I'm going to start working out three-dimensionally what all this means. All right, and we're gonna keep it simple. So I've now given some width here because I need a fuel tank, okay? So I need a fuel tank, like so. I also need space for an engine, okay? So that's that's kind of this block here. Like so, we can draw through if that helps. There's a seat portion, we'll keep that really thin, okay? And just a little bit of a raised portion here in the back. That can be a continuation of the seat or a secondary passenger seat. We also have things like headlight or an area for a headlight because we don't know what this is gonna look like just yet. So we'll just kind of block this in like so. The wheel is going to have some thickness to it, okay? So the front wheel is gonna be a little bit skinnier than the back wheel, for example. So we can account for that, offset ellipses and so forth. Also, we're no longer coming down from the center here. So if I just draw a line like so, and then down and down like so, it gives me a chance to introduce a fork on this bike, okay? And we can just kind of block in these elements. When in doubt, rough it out, always a good strategy. We can leverage these eight divisions that we put in 
to the initial ellipse to kind of tell us where we want to put some spokes. So that's a good way to put spokes in on your motorcycle if this is your first time drawing a motorcycle. Now we have handlebars, we can draw some central lines and then now add some volume to those lines and now we have handlebars just like that. Now as far as the details on these bars, you know, maybe you have your brake brake lever, clutch, all of that there, some sort of instrument cluster. Again, depending on the the type of bike here, we can just block something in. And now we can start to do things like shaping the gas tank. Okay, if we want something that's a little bit rounder, we can shape that in like so. The engine itself, okay, we know we need some sort of cooling. I like to just throw a couple parallel lines in like so. And then for the engine itself, maybe some sort of cylindrical element here. We also have an air box that's part of the bike and as well as the frame slash exhaust, okay? So for that, I'm just gonna take the perimeter here that we had, and now I have some exhaust pipes for my bike, like so. And perhaps we have a few footrests that we can put in place, okay? So just keeping it rough, keeping it sketchy. We also have the drive train for the bike, whether that's chain or belt driven, but that's gonna be a part of the bike as well. And we wanna account for that. Now, everything else in between, okay, I tend to either obscure because I'm not really an expert on the anatomy of a bike. I know enough that I can draw something that looks familiar, but if you really want to design a bike, I would suggest becoming familiar with the anatomy of that thing so that you can accurately represent it. All right, so we have enough of an underlay here that we can work with. So now I'm gonna take this sketch, throw it under my piece of paper here, and now we can just resketch, okay? And by that, like I always say, it's about trying to capture the essence of something without sucking the life out of it, okay? So just keeping it loose. If you make mistakes, that's okay. I like this kind of light that we had. You know, maybe maybe this is some sort of LED array of a light. So I like that. I am using a brush pen. So pardon my smudge. It was a little, uh, little too fresh for me to move as quickly as I was. All right, so let's get our forks in get our spokes in on the wheels as well. If it's easier for you, you can always use an ellipse template. I'm going to opt to not use an ellipse template here and just keep it kind of sketchy, something like that. And now just a couple tread marks on my wheels, you know, from both sides, one on the far side, trying to respect the midpoint line as well in this portion of the sketch. By midpoint line, I mean on the rim or the wheel itself, okay? And do your best to symbolically represent what's there without encumbering or weighing down the drawing. So what I mean by that is you kind of have to pick your battles or decide where to put those lines um, while you're drawing because you don't want it to feel super heavy, okay? That's one thing I try to avoid with my drawings is making it feel super heavy or worrying about every single detail as I'm drawing. All right, I think this will be more of a line drawing, maybe with a little bit of marker here and there for shade or tone, but we'll keep it simple. Um, and again, just focusing on trying to redraw, but not trace here, because tracing kind of makes you draw a little bit slower and you lose a lot of the, the life and energy that you have in those initial sketches or drawings. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Simulate a little texture, just my brush pen. And these are awesome pens. This is a Kuretake Furuge, Furugo Kuchi pen. I'm not sure how to quite say that word and I feel like I'm always butchering it, but 
again, here's an example of where we did our initial work and I kind of know now perspective wise what's happening. So it's a lot easier to kind of come in and make changes and get the form or shape that we want out of that rough sketch. So when in doubt, rough it out and light till you get it right. Always seems to work for me and hopefully works for you guys as well as it'll just take the stress and worry out of drawing. All right, so we had our kind of frame here and I wanna carry that through as well as the exhaust. So a little bit of a change here as we go, maybe some fins for air cooling right there. Maybe some fins here as well for cooling. Air box on this side. And I think as long as you are more or less respectful of the high level anatomy of a bike, if you're just doing a quick sketch, you can get away with a lot, but by no means am I saying this is a <laughs> design for a bike, um, just a way for, for me to sketch a bike. I know there's, there's lots of uh, motorheads out there that know a lot more than I do. So my goal here is just to get something representative of a bike, something that you guys can work with. Um, that makes, makes enough sense, at least visually speaking. All right, so let's get back to this exhaust and I'm gonna have it come off to the side here. And now I can do this back wheel, draw with your shoulder, draw through, keep that energy going, just like that. If you gotta go a little slower, that's fine too. Just make sure you bounce things out with the right energy as you're sketching. All right, so there's my gas can, maybe a little logo on it, and a couple lines here on the seat. I'm going with a direct drivetrain here. So I don't have to deal with sketching a chain, a little bit of a cheat. Again, leveraging that eight division uh, setup that I had for the wheel. Just trying to pick those lines out of the underlay sketch right here. All right, maybe just something obscuring. We can make this dark. If we're using marker, it's really easy to hide, but I'm just gonna focus on line weight and getting things, getting things popping just with our lines. All right, chrome pipe. For the chrome pipes, I'm just gonna have a nice heavy line like so, and then just continue like so. You can kind of see I did a little bit on the forks as well. Okay, if that's chrome, maybe just like a, a nice heavy section and a thin line some shadow over here as well. And just continue with that. We'd have shadow under this little heads up display on the front and now on the seat, maybe a little bit of stippling for texture. Okay, continuing with that shadow core and so forth. All right, we're getting really close here on our black and white drawing of a motorcycle. A couple tread marks as well, just like we had for this front tire, like so. All right, it's looking pretty good. I'm gonna make parts of this front rim a little darker just so it pops. Um, drawing with ink is a little bit different than knowing you're going to have some marker to help out. So just wanna make sure I have contrast and shadow where I need it as I'm doing this. All right. <clears throat> So now I've removed the under sketch. You can see there's our underlay and our cleaned up overlay and feels pretty good. You know, I might throw a little, little shadow action in here, for example, just to kind of ground things. Maybe a little, little background element as well. Like so let's get some shadow on this, this back wheel. And a little extra line weight. We're really close here to what I would consider to be a decent quick sketch of this motorcycle. And to be fair, I haven't done one of these in a long time. So doing the underlay is a great way for you to kind of understand the geometry, what the parts are, if it's helpful, 
Google the anatomy of the object or look at a few pictures, not to copy the pictures, but rather to understand the makeup of that thing. And it'll be a lot easier to be able to draw that thing from your memory the next time. All right, I did forget to kind of hint at the handle here in the shadow. But yeah, something like that. Just basically taking the shape of this bike, squishing it and kind of laying it down on the ground, which I know if you're a rider, you don't ever want to lay down your bike, right? For those of you who do ride motorcycles, if you're watching this, um, I know that's a thing. I have a few friends who, who ride them, but I'm too chicken for it. So <laughs> I don't think, I don't think that's going to be in my future anytime soon. All right. Okay, guys. So that's my quick explanation again of how to draw a motorcycle. Start with the basics, figure out some proportional breakup that works for you. Take a look at pictures if you must or need to, and then redraw the object. Keep it loose, keep it sketchy, but pay attention to those essential parts as you do this so that you can really represent something even at a high level um, with the right amount of confidence. Well, thanks for watching guys. If you've made it this far, I really do appreciate it. I appreciate all of you fans for showing up for the live streams. We do that three times a week here on Sketch A Day on Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. So you'll definitely want to subscribe and turn on alerts so you don't miss those. Come say hi on the socials. I'm at sketchaday.com on Instagram and at Daily Sketches on Twitter. I'm pretty easy to find on Facebook as well. Just look for Sketch A Day, really, really easy. This week and last week, we released our new brush set for Procreate. If you use Procreate, there will be additional content for those coming out soon, but check them out, let me know what you think, and I hope you love them as much as I do. Well, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time right here on Sketch Day.